you would probably agree that Pixar movies are great, right? Well, this video will probably make you like the films even more. Now, Pixar has never officially come out and said it, but it seems like all of the movies are set in the same universe. We're sure you've seen other characters or things that end up in other Pixar films before. Today, you may see some that you've never even seen. Before we get the show on the road, hit that subscribe button and you'll join our notification squad to stay current with all of our videos. Can you guess which movie these emojis are hinting at? Find out shortly following the video. I can't find it! It doesn't seem to be on any of these- Flick, Heimlich, and Dim. Toy Story 2. Remember Flick, Heimlich, and Dim from A Bug's Life released back in 1998? Well, believe it or not, they showed up in Toy Story 2. They appear in the scene right after Woody gets a makeover from a man that Al hires. It is also sadly after Woody has the name Andy painted over. The scene cuts to Buzz who is inside Al's toy barn attempting to find Al and rescue his friend. We see Buzz making his way down the aisle and if you notice on the right hand side are three of the characters from A Bug's Life. Flick is lying on the ground and Dim and Heimlich are on the shelf. There are a lot of Heimlich and Dim toys on display but only one of Flick. Of course the main character of a movie is usually the first one to go. It's one of those moments that if you're not paying close attention, you would completely miss seeing them. Had you seen them before? Have you seen A Bug's Life? If you haven't, it was released a year before Toy Story 2 and is worth the watch despite it not being the most popular Pixar movie out there. Arlo Monsters University. Put on your best scary face and grab your books because we're taking a trip back to Monsters University, the place where Mike, Sully, and Randall all got their starts in the scaring business. Why are we taking a look at Monsters University, you might ask? Well, it is to show you that Pixar hid Arlo from the good dinosaur in plain sight. The scene takes place in one of the scare training rooms in school. We see a few monsters in referee uniforms sweeping up the floor and making sure it is ready for the monsters to scare the child. As they are sweeping, we see a toy green dinosaur with a very long neck. It was Pixar's way of showing us the main character in their next movie. If you blinked, you probably would have missed it. Not to mention, there are a lot of other toys on the ground as well. Now, when you go back and watch Monsters University, you'll be sure to spot your favorite green dinosaur. That is, unless your favorite is still Rex from Toy Story. Did you see Arlo but didn't recognize him since the good dinosaur hadn't been released yet? <laughs> Rex, Wally. Now, we're gonna talk about everyone's favorite robot hoarder, Wally. You'd agree he's pretty cute, right? It was definitely pretty interesting to sit through the first part of Wally with absolutely no dialogue, but the robot won over our hearts pretty quickly. Wally collected a lot of stuff over the years, which is pretty apparent from his home. If you look closely during the scene where he first opens his door and we see a lot of his belongings, take a look at what is behind the bowling pins. It is a very brief moment, but we can see one of the best characters from Toy Story, Rex. Had you seen him before today? Another one of those moments where you need to have an eagle eye to spot it. The by and large company which is littered all throughout Wally isn't the first time you see it in a Pixar movie. In Toy Story 3, we see that the batteries inside of Buzz Lightyear are made by BNL. This is another clue that all of the Pixar movies are in fact in the same universe. Now you have yet another fact you can tell your friends and family all about. I have no idea, but it would be really great if it didn't do it again. Nemo and Jesse, Monsters Inc. How could you not love the relationship between Boo and Kitty, AKA Scully from Monsters Inc. Boo is so stinking cute and the two care for each other a lot. We see just how much Boo cares for Sully towards the end of the movie when him and Mike finally retrieve her door so she can return home. Sully steps into her room and Boo immediately begins to start bringing him her toys. That definitely means that she cares about her big furry kitty. Oh, wait, what's that in her hand? It's a little Nemo. A little bit more foreshadowing from Pixar as two years later, Finding Nemo was released in theaters. Now, Nemo wasn't the only toy that Boo had from another Pixar movie. When Sully steps out of the door and is trying to leave, if you look on Boo's table, you can see a Jessie doll from Toy Story. Not only that, but the same ball that Andy had is on Boo's floor. Had you noticed all three of these hidden in Monsters, Inc. before? It's pretty interesting that there were two things from Toy Story in the film. Are there any other Easter eggs that you know of? Doc Hudson, The Incredibles. At first, we all thought Doc Hudson from Cars was just a crotchety old race car who didn't want anything to do with the slick new racer, Lightning McQueen. Turns out he wasn't such a bad automobile after all and became a character that we could all like. If you've never noticed before, before the Hudson Hornet moved to Radiator Springs, he was living in the same city as, well, let us explain. 
Doc shows up for a brief moment when the Incredibles are fighting the giant robot towards the end of the movie. The heroes finally gain the upper hand when they retrieve Syndrome's remote. Mr. Incredible has one of its claws in his grasp, and when Elastigirl presses the button to ignite the rocket, on the left-hand side of the screen is the Hudson Hornet. Pretty cool, right? Cars wasn't released until two years after The Incredibles, so if you did spot Doc, you may have forgotten all about that scene. From now on, you'll know, and you can share the fact with all your friends and family. It's a mystery as to why Doc was there on that day. He was able to see a pretty great fight between man and machine, that's for sure. We're on our way, Ellie. Lotso Bear, up. Remember the pink, furry, villainous teddy bear named Lotso from Toy Story 3? You might be surprised which film he spotted in when we show you this segment. Lotso seemed like a good bear at first, but being betrayed and heartbroken from his first owner, he became evil. The other film that Lotso Huggin' Bear appears in is Up. It is right after Mr. Fredrickson unleashes his plethora of balloons and his house starts to take flight. It cuts to a scene with a little girl playing with an airplane on the floor of her room. You can see next to her bed on the floor is Lotso, who kind of matches her sheets. The same ball from Toy Story is in the shot too, which is pretty cool. The little girl is gifted with some cool, colorful lighting coming from the balloons. At first she seems a little perplexed by the sudden change, but quickly gets up just as the house floats by her room. That would be quite the sight to see, especially at that age. It's safe to say that Up was one of the most touching of all Pixar's movies and had a great story to go along with it. Who wouldn't want to be able to travel by balloons in the comfort of your own home? You gotta remember, when Riley was three, animals were all the rage. Forrest Woodbush, Inside Out. Speaking of Riley from Inside Out, there's a moment from that movie that showed us a character from another Pixar movie. It is when Joy is talking with the other emotions and mentions the time with the dinosaur. The next scene is a glimpse of a memory from what seems to be a family road trip. Riley's father is taking a picture of Riley and her mother in Asterikosaurus, a smaller relative of the Triceratops. Now, it isn't just any Asterikosaurus. It's none other than Forrest Woodbush, aka the pet collector from The Good Dinosaur, released in 2015. In Inside Out, you can't see all of his horns, but he still has the same mopey face like in The Good Dinosaur. Pixar was actually doing a little foreshadowing with this clip, considering that Inside Out was released in June of 2015, while The Good Dinosaur didn't come out until November. You definitely would have had to be paying attention in Inside Out to notice the correlation to The Good Dinosaur. Did any of you remember seeing Forrest Woodbush in Inside Out? Usually, Pixar shows characters from previous movies in their new films, so it's interesting to see a character no one had known about yet. I did. All by myself. Riley Anderson, Finding Dory. Finding Dory was a great combination of a prequel and sequel to Finding Nemo. We learned the backstory of our favorite blue tang with short-term memory loss, had some laughs, traveled across the ocean again, and, like Finding Nemo, had our hearts touched when Dory was reunited with her family. We're gonna fill you in on a little Easter egg if you hadn't seen it already. When Dory is thrown into Destiny's tank, she immediately turns around and runs into the glass while the girl stares at her in awe. Now, if you look at the left-hand side of the screen, you will see a familiar face. Do you recognize Riley Anderson from Inside Out? If you're thinking, why is Riley at the Marine Life Institute, remember that she and her family moved to San Francisco, which is in the Bay Area and probably not too far away. We don't see her parents in the shot, so we don't know if she's there with them or maybe some new friends that she made. It looks like Riley is enjoying herself at the Marine Life Institute from the smile on her face. Hopefully, she has adjusted to her life on the West Coast. Merida, you are a princess. I expect you to act like one. Sully, brave. Those flowing red curly locks, a mixture of Legolas and Katniss Everdeen, a princess who was bound to change her fate no matter the cost. This character sounds familiar, right? It is none other than Merida, Pixar's first ever princess. Brave was another great Pixar movie for the whole family, especially for mothers and daughters everywhere. Now, let's get to the part where we show you a snippet of something you may not have seen before. Remember when Merida comes across the house in the forest and finds the woodcarver? Sorry, which? Merida goes inside and begins to see all of her bear carvings. She is a little perplexed at first and doesn't know what to think of the old hag. Merida then sees the broom sweeping the floor by itself and it clicks that she has come across a witch. The broom goes flying into the corner, knocking over some lumber, and on the right hand part of the screen, we can see a carving of Sully from Monsters Inc. on a piece of wood. Then Merida turns around exclaiming, You're a witch! 
It's a pretty funny carving of Sully as it looks like he is trying to cover up his private area and acting like he's naked. <sighs> Coral, get inside the house, Coral. No, no, Coral, don't. They'll be fine. Just get inside you right now. Finding Nemo, Mr. Incredible comic book. We understand that you may not enjoy going to the dentist, so sorry in advance if this brings up any bad memories. Remember the scene in Finding Nemo where Marlin forces Nigel the Pelican into P. Sherman's dental office? It was all in an attempt to save Nemo from going into the trash can because he was playing dead. Nigel doesn't want to go in, but Marlin forces him by pulling his tongue. Darla screams, Sherman tries to grab Nigel, then a drill hits the floor and starts going off. Then it cuts to a young boy sitting in the waiting room reading a comic book with a terrified look on his face. It seems his mom thinks it's totally normal for a young girl to be screaming in the dentist's office. Wait a minute, what is that that he's reading? If you look closely, you can see that it is actually a Mr. Incredible comic book. Pretty cool, right? We wonder what Mr. Incredible was up to in that issue. Hopefully that boy had a better time in the dentist's chair than Darla did. Have any of you noticed the Mr. Incredible comic book before? If you also look closely at the newspaper the boy's mother is reading, there's a dental ad for Dr. Sherman. Well, that's all we have for you today, everybody. Have you spotted any of these characters in other films before? Do you look for them when you're watching Pixar films? Would you have liked to see different ones included? Be sure to like this video and comment in the section below. Thanks for watching. And the answer to the movie emoji is, well, did you get it right?